to share a Google Calendar, navigate to the calendar that you'd like to share in the bottom left of Google Calendar, click on the three dots, click on Settings and Sharing. From here, you can either make the calendar available to the public, or you can add people and groups to share the calendar with. Hi everyone, this is Anson from AnsonAlex.com, and I just showed you the quickest way to share a calendar in Google Calendar. If that's all you came here for, well then I hope it helped, and I'll see you next time. However, if you'd like to learn more, stay tuned because I'm going to show you everything that there is to know about sharing calendars in Google Calendar. Okay, so here we are back in Google Calendar and to kind of review and go a little bit slower, let's take a look at what I just did. I went over to the My Calendars section and you'll notice that I have some default calendars in here, but if I had created any additional calendars, they would be listed here as well. And if I want to share the calendar, all I have to do is click on those three dots and go to settings and sharing. And then from here, we have our different sharing options. And we're going to spend a little bit of time in here and go through all of the different options that we have. So first of all, you'll notice that in this section that says access permissions for events, we have the option to make this calendar public. So if I click that checkbox, it gives me a warning letting me know that, hey, you know, all of your events are gonna be visible to the whole world, are you sure? Imagine if Google didn't have that warning. Anyways, you can just click through that and you'll notice that once we have that box checked, we have some different options over here for the people that are looking at the calendar. Do we want them to be able to see all the details of every single event or do we only want them to be able to see whether we're free or whether we're busy? And I'll show you in a little bit how you can specify um, whether you're free or busy on your Google Calendar. But this essentially means that people will come into the calendar and there might be an event on your calendar, but they won't be able to see the details of it. They'll just see that, hey, you know, Anson is busy at that time. There's an event there. I don't know what it is, but there's something. Uh, so that is how you can make it public. And then once you have it public, you can just grab the shareable link. So if we click on that, we could then just copy this link to our clipboard and we could share this any way we'd like via email, via text. So this is also how you can share calendars with non-Google users. So if somebody wants to come in and make changes to your calendar, they do need to have a Google account of some sort. However, just to view the calendar, they don't need any account whatsoever. You just need to make the calendar public and then send them the link. So that is how you can share Google calendars with the whole world. Now, more common, and let me just go ahead and uncheck this for now. Now, more commonly, you're going to wanna share your Google calendars with other people, maybe not the entire world. And to do that, you're going to do that here in the share with specific people or groups section. So you'll notice that right now, I've uh, already shared this calendar uh, with another one of my email addresses, but I actually have another one that I'd like to share it with. So let's go ahead and click add people and groups so that we can go ahead and share it. You'll notice that we can add by either email or name. So if we add it by name, it's going to try and look at our contacts and see if it can find that person's email address. So it's always safe to go with the email address. So we will just do ansonalex2023 at gmail.com. And then when we're sharing our calendar, we have the option of whether we want them to be able to see only whether we're free or busy. So again, I already talked about that. Do we want them to be able to see all of the event details? Do we want them to be able to see all the event details and make changes to them? Or do we want them to be able to see all the details, make changes and manage sharing? So this is essentially giving them complete administrator permissions. So that is up to you. Uh, you can choose whichever permission you'd like and then go ahead and click send. When you do that, that person is now going to receive an email letting them know that you've shared a calendar with them. So let's take a look and see what it looks like on their end. Okay, so here we are in the Gmail account of the person that I shared the calendar with. You'll notice that we have this email right here that says Anson Alex Tutorials has shared a calendar with you. When I click that, we can go ahead and click the add this calendar link. And you'll notice that we now have the option to add the calendar. And once we've added it, it now appears in the side of our screen where it says other calendars. And you'll notice that uh, there's an event right here on this calendar because it's the same color that says analytics meeting. So if I were to uncheck that calendar to hide it, you'll notice that that event disappears and we could check it again to make it reappear. So a couple of things that I want to show you just from here, if you ever want to remove a calendar that's been shared with you, you can just hit the X when you are hovering over it and you'll notice that it will unsubscribe it for you. So you can go ahead and click on unsubscribe and you'll no longer subscribe to events in that calendar and it's removed from your list. Now, the one other thing that I wanna show you is how the free and busy feature for events works here in Google Calendar. So let's just click to create a new event. And when this box pops up to create our event, you'll notice that we could you know, add a title and set the time and all that. But down here at the bottom, 
where you have the calendar symbol, there's this area where it says busy and default visibility. So right here, we can choose when we're creating this event, when other people are looking at our calendar, especially if they can't see event details, do we want them to see that there is an event here or not? So if we do, we could say choose busy, which means that other people looking will see that we're busy. However, if we choose free, other people aren't even really going to see that this event exists and it will show us as being free at this particular time. Under the default visibility option, this lets us know that by default, this event is going to be shared in the same way that the calendar is shared. But we could click on this drop down to change that. So in other words, if we made this calendar public, we could then come in here and change this to make this event private. And then people wouldn't be able to see it. Uh, so that is a way to keep private events on completely public calendars. But you definitely want to be careful when doing that because it's easy to make a mistake and then your events can be seen by anyone. So that's pretty much it for sharing events here in Google Calendar. Again, the easiest way is to just mouse over the calendar that you'd like to share in the bottom left of Google Calendar, click on the three little dots, and go to the settings and sharing option. And from here, you can share it. I do wanna let you know that unfortunately, there isn't a way to share calendars in the Google Calendar mobile app. You do have to do it from the website, but you can do it on a phone because you can open up a browser, go to calendar.google.com, and then force it to be displayed in desktop mode, and then you can share the calendars in the exact same way that I showed you in this video. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up here on YouTube. And if you wanna see more technology tips and tutorials, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's all I have for you for now. This is Anson from AnsonAlex.com.